technology is that we get to do over. <laughs> and today I've done it twice. Somehow, as much as I'm a retired, more or less, network engineer, and I'm supposed to already know the technology, just like a mechanic who works on his own car, it seems to be the last thing I work on. Well, speak to my heart, oh God. And I brought out the heavy artillery because we've already read this once and recorded it. But that, if you think about it, isn't the point of why we do this. It isn't to record or to be stressed about whether we do it again and do it again because we like it. But it's to hear, to be, to know the Lord. I mean, how hard is it to sit down and take a moment to listen to the birds sing, to the wind whisper your name, to the living God call you personally. I think sometimes do over, like in this book, may be the best thing to do. Because every time I read it, it seems like when I get done with it, I just go, wow, that's it at all. So, maybe, having said all that we could say, let's find out what God may speak. Let's hear His voice whispering in your understanding and mine. Because without you, I probably wouldn't read it. How appropriate when you feel out of focus. Deep down inside, are you dissatisfied or even downright miserable? <laughs> Most of the world feels that way at one time or another. Even those who seem to have everything that should make them happy. Unfortunately, this also includes many Christians. Have you ever wondered why? Especially here on the North American continent where we lived in a land of plenty, no nation has greater access to Christian literature and teaching and programming than we do. And currently, at least, no other body of Christians has as much religious freedom as do the Christians who are in North America. Yet for all our freedom, for all our resources, we are a hurting, miserable, and relatively impotent people. We are ignorant of the power which is in us. As I sat meditating on the first week's study in Henry Blackaby and Claude King's Experiencing God, the statement, the focus needs to be on God, not on life, caught my attention. Suddenly it all clicked into place. Misery comes when we are the focus of our lives. Reason with me for a moment. Where is much of the emphasis in the world today? Isn't it on self? That is certainly the focus in our society with self-esteem, self-fulfillment, self-actualization. But think about the emphasis in much of our Christian teaching, our books, our seminars, our radio, and television. Isn't it also on self? Taking it a step farther, isn't it like the me, my, we, us, them generation? <laughs> and what is this focus accomplishing? Are the majority of Christians any happier, any more productive, walking in greater power? Are they being used of God to impact their society? Statistics tell us no. However, when God becomes the focus rather than self, then everything takes second place to his will for our lives. In essence, Nothing else really matters. He is the only one whom we have to please. He is the only one to whom we are truly and rightly answerable. We need not fear that such an attitude, 
the focus of pleasing God alone will make us hard, unloving, or uncaring. If our sinner is God, then what He works out in our lives will reflect His character and His likeness. When we are set free from the bondage of pleasing others, including ourselves, of currying favor from others and others' approval, then others and self will not be able to make us miserable or dissatisfied, for only what pleases God will please us. Do you know what pleases God? If we know we have pleased God, then like Paul and Silas, we can sing in the prisons of life, for we know our sovereign God holds the key. And he can open the prison doors whenever he pleases. Hmm. After all, he is God. He rules over all. God does as he pleases in heaven and on earth. Nothing can stay his hand, and no one can say to him, What have you done? Daniel 4, 34 and 35. The will of God will never be thwarted. The wonderful benefit of all this is that if you make the will of God your focus day by day, if you seek to please Him alone, then you will find yourself satisfied with life. Misery will slip away like a whipped puppy with its tail between his legs. Life will take on purpose. God will meet you right where you are, not demanding or expecting you to live by the standards of others or the world nor according to the talents and gifts of others. Rather, <laughs> you will simply live by His power, which will work in you and will lead you into good works He ordained for you before the very foundation of the world. Ephesians 1.19, 3.20, and 2.10. The will of God for your life is simply that you submit yourselves to Him each day and say, Father, your will for today is mine. Your pleasure for today is mine. Your work for today is mine. I trust you to be God. You lead me and I will follow. Take one day at a time. Tomorrow will take care of itself. For he is God over all your tomorrows. Matthew 6.34 Therefore, you can commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him and he will do it. I like to put it pretty simple. I always say to people, you can boil the Bible down to one scripture in a nutshell. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. The issue then isn't so much as what God says or wrote as what is God saying to you today. If Jesus is in you, he's already pleased with you. All you need to do is find out what he wants for you today. God bless you.